In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. To the Vundacast, the official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that knows that the true secret of the ooze is that Kevin Nash job for the turtles, right? Whoa. Whoa. I am your host, and I guess today, just for now, I guess I'm, I'm the Leonardo of this podcast, because I'm leading it. Okay. But I'll also try to play the... The Donatello and bring you some good facts and scientific nuggets. And you brought the electronics? Well. So, uh, with me today, you have a pop culture flowchart special edition where this is the year of Turtles 2, so we're gonna watch Turtles 2, the real Turtles 2, Secrets of the Ooze. Whoa. <laughs> We've been talking about doing a commentary for like two years. It's and finally gonna get done. Whoa. 2016. Get her done. Who knew? Celebrities die, we rise. No, right. that's, that's a downer. <laughs> it's a downer. It's a downer. There's a lot of celebrities have died this year. It's crazy. Yeah. So with but a lot to, of celebrities die every year. With me today, they're all on drugs. You have the dulcet <laughs> tones of Mr. J. Hi, Mr. J. And Lily tearing into oh, what a water bottle, bottle that <laughs> is powerful. Yeah. Um. So that's actually you it's know we're gonna have to start the movie so that we can start watching it. <laughs> We don't need a lot of introduction, but uh, let's go. Right now, we're at the New Line Cinema's logo, Yeah, and we're about to press play. Now, I love the New Line Cinema's logo. I love how it creates like a little movie house that you live in. It's been a while since I've seen like uh, a great New Line Cinema movie. Uh, I can't remember what's the last New Line Cinema movie. I know the I Blades saw. were New Line, right? Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I know it was a long time ago. What about the last Dumb and Dumber? Well, the thing is, is that Dumber now too. New Line is owned by Warner Brothers. No, but I think I think um, so I think, think they were always distributed. I think now, yeah, they're more in control of New Line, mm-hmm. but they were always distributed by New because all these movies were distributed through Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah, but like New Line had its like had more autonomy than than they do now. I think. So now you're getting all the great shots of New York. Yeah. You got street vendors. You got horse and carriages. People eating hot dogs and pizzas and stuff. That's the way to do it. Making out while eating pizza? That girl's <laughs> hairstyle is unfortunate for this film. <laughs> even the cab driver's eating what I, pizza. What I love is that even though this movie's 1991, everyone's pure 1985. <laughs> well, 90, 91, I mean... You still have some of that 80s style in 91, you know? Well, the thing is... Even is when that, you watch the music videos no, of the sure. uh, early 90s. The thing is, is that I heard this theory that, like, people didn't realize that the 90s were the 90s until, like, around, like, 1997. And what people, like, remember no. is, like, 97 to 99 of the 90s. I think around 93, maybe 94, 95, maybe there was, like, an... Awakening? A, a different... Yeah, because I think, like... Like, up until 92, it was still very, like, late 80s style. Well, we're just to oh. our hero, Ernie Reyes Jr. Ernie Reyes Jr. A.K.A. Kino. What's up? The man who would... He was actually in the first Turtles movie as well. He actually played one of the Turtles in the costume. Whoa. So Dropping got... the nuggets. So they said, you got a face that needs to be in front of the camera. They loved him so much. Yes, they loved him so much. They were like, we're going to create a part out of full cloth just for Ernie Reyes Jr. So this film was directed by Michael Pressman, little known fact. 
I have no idea. Has he ever directed anything? It's still alive. I'm looking it up right now. He did uh, some of the films he has directed are The Great Texas Dynamite Chase, which I've never heard of. Never heard of it. 1976, though. That's a great title, though. Texas Dynamite Chase? That's cool. Uh Uh-oh. All that stolen merchandise. Who could it be, Steven? It must be some some no good people. It must be the stinky foot. See, this was like... This is like such a great intro because it's like a little like parable. Like it's like it's like an urban legend being born. Like oh, the pizza guy was off by himself and he saw a crime happening, and then he was saved by a bunch of ninjas. Well, I mean, if it would have just been these three guys, because he he did a pretty good job taking on these. Oh three yeah, guys. for sure. Yeah, it's just that he got swarmed by like twenty more guys. Yeah, because they're robbing like a whole mall, so they need like. You know, I guess 20 guys to do it. Even if it only would have been... Now, by the way, when he swept that guy, I swear that guy fell way before he got yeah, swept. Yeah, he's... <laughs> they're not the best stunt fighters, but they're pretty good. And you saw that guy's, like, MC Hammer... Uh, yeah, everybody has MC best. Hammer pants in the 90s. That's the way to do it. And they're all wearing the cheapest stockings on their faces. I guess because there's... Why would they wear stockings on their why, faces? Why aren't they just wearing regular foot ninja outfits? Well, they're not foot. Wait, here's the turtles. Whoa, zoom in logo two. This is the, the best secret one. Of the ooze and their freeze frame in the air. Oh my god, skylight! How cool is that? I wanted this VHS so bad. My mom wouldn't let me buy any VHS movies. No, she's like, you're just gonna watch it once and forget about she it. She denied you. <laughs> she denied me every VHS movie. So you never were given VHS scissors? Never. Whoa. It wasn't until I was like in high school that like DVDs were coming out, and that's when I started buying my own. I wasn't but movies. a man until I was allowed to own film. <laughs> yeah, own the no. film. I had the VHSs of Turtles One and Two. That I believe, uh, I think I bought them through the Pizza Hut endorsement that they had. Was it cheaper? Yeah, I think you got like like a pizza and like a movie for like thirteen dollars or something like that. Like it's a pretty good deal. Well, I remember that one of the VHSs, I think, came with a coupon or something. And there was, like, one guy I heard that, like, uh, he he found the coupon years later, and he used it, and they still had to honor it because it had no, like, expiration date on the coupon. Yeah. Well, okay, so now we see the turtles fighting, and what's great about the turtles Ooh, fighting yo, in this yo. movie... Is that they're not allowed to use their weapons because <laughs> they don't want kids using their weapons? But isn't this so creative? Like it is, how yeah. Mikey's fighting. using his yo-yo. He's in a toy shop. He can do anything he wants. So he's gonna walk the dog right into their. Whoa! Testicles. Walk the dog. Do it. I might walk have to walk the dog. <laughs> uh, this is pretty cool to use his weapons to hold himself up in the sky. Although I think that the weight of his body on the swords and gravity would make them fall down, but. He is Ooh, so, he is so, like, amused by this stupid clown. <laughs> and he's, like, and he's their scientific genius. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but how does he do that? How does he do the thing? Well, does I he thought put that he's standing on, on the spring. I guess. Thing. But you see how they never cut down because it's bullshit. Like, there's no yeah, way he could be possibly wanna... doing that. Or what if he's just that gifted a mime? It's like that Michael Jackson effect. And are you okay? So now he, someone's about to get the sa- a sausage fest. Nunchuck stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is so good. Like, this is a great intro. Why? So in the Turtles hierarchy, first movie's the best movie, in my opinion. Yeah. Then this one. Then TMNT 2007. I think, um... Even though the first one is the best, I will agree with that. But I don't know. Something about this movie is just the most fun one of the trilogy, I think. Yeah, it's light I think it's the most fun one. It's, you know, has vanilla ice and more do you want? Because definitely the first one, it, it, it gets a little bit slow in parts because they get really dramatic with it. Where this one, they could just run with it and go crazy and just have fun and be so, silly and stupid. So Michael Pressman also directed a film called Dr. Detroit. Great title. In the 80s. Then he directed Turtles in the 90s. And then also in the 90s, he directed a movie called Tick Jillian on her 37th birthday. And then he's basically directed episodes of Picket Fences, The Practice, The Guardian, Boston Legal, The Closer, Law and Order, Weeds, and Grey's Anatomy. My dad actually likes that movie, Tick Jillian on her 37th birthday. Oh, you've actually heard of that movie? Yeah, with Michelle Pfeiffer. Now you know next time you see him, you could be like, hey, that guy, 
directed Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> She's like eating some little plastic thing. I'm trying to get it out. Um, oh no, Lily, don't die. Lily, leave it. So now we have Kino getting punked out of his pizza and turtle friendship. Damn, turtles now. just straight up stole his pizza? Well, they, they ordered the pizza, didn't they? What? They earned it? They ordered it. They ordered it to begin with. No. He wouldn't have even come if they leave weren't it. even, leave you know, if they hadn't ordered it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. And they paid for it, so that's what matters. What's what's bold about this is that not only are the stars of this film four talking turtles, but a Filipino. <laughs> I think he's Filipino. Let me double check before I just randomly call him Filipino. Um, but you know, it's like a diverse cast. And here we have April O'Neil reca- recast. Well, just because they since have the one first Filipino movie? guy is a diverse cast, you think so? Well, he's the lead. I mean, I guess uh, I guess Shredder's Japanese. I mean, is he? I don't even know. Fuck, I'm just saying stuff I don't even know. We're just assuming. <laughs> I'm just assuming he's Japanese. He's supposed to be Japanese in the comics. Well, uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. is American, obviously. Who do you think is the best uh, April? Mm, my heart of hearts, you know, wants to say... Megan Fox, right? No. <laughs> it's like... No, I like the original April. She had a lot of, like... you. I believed her when she was, like, arguing with her boss and stuff. Like, you know, she cared about the stories. You know? This one, like... Yeah, I just like, thought she was... Paige like, Turkle is way hotter. Is that her name? Yeah. Her name mm. is Paige. Maybe. But I just... I like... Like, this... Like, this April O'Neil seems like she would only do, like... The puff pieces, you know, like, oh, schoolboy does good. But if while you ever, the other April O'Neil is doing the hard, scary story, she ain't afraid. I mean, if you ever watched the cartoon, they always, you know, they never took her seriously, anyways. And then there's also the third movie has what the short-haired April O'Neil. No, she uh, is it the same? Is one it, as is this it one? the same girl? Is it? She just cut her hair short. She just cut her hair short. I don't know why, because they go to Japanese times, I guess, and then it's weird. She ate it. Fuck. She ate it? I think she ate it. I can't find she a didn't piece eat of plastic. It. Yeah, she's crazy. Are you serious? Whatever. It'll sh- she's gonna mutate on this podcast now. <laughs> it'll. She's it'll, gonna turn into like. I'm sure to come out the other end. Half a bottle cap and half a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Lily, you're terrible. You're a terrible dog. You're not letting us do this podcast. Ding ding ding! I was correct. Ernie Reyes is the grandson of Filipino immigrants. Whoa. Whoa. Now, here we have a little, like, Chinese mysticism. Steven, they're eating ninja pizza. Made fun of by pizza. This is pizza, how the I eat quickly. pizza all the time, by throwing it at my friends' faces <laughs> and running football plays with it. This is know. the best. That's the way to do it. See, what I was, my problem is that she's, by playing interference, she's creating more damage. Like, just have them, give them a clear shot. Stop playing defense. Her apartment's awesome. Big upgrade since... The first one burned down in the first movie, right? Like yeah, this is probably an have... expensive apartment in New York. See, because she got fired in the last movie, so how did she get a better apartment and a better and a better job? She must have gotten like a be- no, but she got her job at the end because he she found his son. Hypothetically, oh okay, right. So you get your job back if you find your boss's son. That's like a movie rule, I think. Uh, it's pretty new lookout for Shredder. Yeah, we beat the Shredder in the last movie, but we didn't really beat the Shredder. Splinter but you know, now that I'm thinking about it, they always add an unnecessary character into these movies because in the first one you had that annoying kid, Danny. And, uh, Kino's definitely an upgrade. He could take care of himself. He could uh, do, you know. Well, they probably think at this time in the '90s that like you need like a, like a teen kid, a teen kid for the kids to identify with. Yeah, so that they can put themselves in that situation. Or but whatever. or you could just identify with the teen turtles. The they're teen turtles? teenage. Yeah, but they're green. Girls. They're green, and they don't have any good girls to look at. What do you mean they don't have any girls? Like they do. They, can... they don't have Venus de Milo. They can't look at any like. Yeah, they're turtles. always they're always into. Yeah, but they don't have any lady turtles. Yeah, but they're always hot. They always have the hots for it's April. It's weird. That's the problem with the new movies. Is that no, but even the old movies, they that did that. Yeah, but in these movies, it's not like... It doesn't feel dirty. In the new movies, it feels dirty. 
First of all, that was Vernon looking at her butt, not the turtles. I don't care, but it feels dirty. They over-sexualize April, so when the turtles... They always sexualize April. No, but... You don't remember? I'm not saying they don't sexualize her, but I'm saying... In the new movies, in the modern films, they sexualize her throughout the movie. So that when the turtles are sexualizing her, you have like more imagery that you're playing with. Lily agrees with me, that's why she's talking. Um, but in these movies, whenever they, you know, make April attractive, that's the only time they make her attractive. It's not the whole movie where it's just like, look at her butt, you know? I don't know. Like, but it's also like the times, right? So like the 90s, people wore more clothes, more clothing Mm -hmm. than now, you know? But in the third one, if you remember, like, she starts taking off more items of clothing or her clothes get smaller, you know? She's in the medieval times. In the worst one. Now, did your parents ever punish you by making you do backflips until you learned your lesson? Uh, I might break my neck if I try to backflip. <laughs> That's what you did. Now, I bet you... I don't know why, but I feel like Splinter in this movie doesn't look as good as the first Splinter. Are you crazy? He looks better. No, I feel like they, he has too much... Like, I can tell they spent a little more money. They gave him a little more expressiveness. But I think the lack of expressiveness I, in the I first think, movie is what made it great. No, I think that everything in this movie, out of the whole trilogy, looks better. You know, looks the best. So, the, the, whole so the production design, yes. overall. Of this movie is better than the rest. I think Shredder looks better. I think... The Turtles, Turtles one, look better. Turtles 1 looks real. It looks gritty. It's awesome. And you know what bothers me too about this movie? I'm realizing now the more we watch it, and we should have watched Turtles 1 the way I originally wanted it <laughs> to, is that Shredder doesn't have a cool speech in this movie. He doesn't say like, you are my children. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it's stuff like that that slows down the movie. You don't need no, all that. No, that's so cool. You have cool music. Like, I think it did have a speech in this movie, I think. We'll like, see. Uh, we'll a, find, a short we'll one. find out. A short speech. But that's what we need, a short a bunch speech. of angry little teenage ninjas who are little white kids. But see, look, now they have all their costumes. But how come when they went to terrorize that pizza place, they didn't have their costumes, the mall, or whatever that was? Because maybe they were afraid they were going to get caught because they suck. That'd be ninjas. This guy's the man. Top two is awesome. He was like, when I was little, I was like both like. But this really is another character that I think they invented for the movies. Because why didn't they have like Hun? You know what? Bring him to the comics. Bring him to the TV show. I love Tatsu. He has a dope look. He's like Shredder's, you know, right hand. Yeah. Uh, man, and he like is so his face. He's like so into Shredder. He's like, oh, Master Shredder. I was just kidding. Tatsu, leave. No way. Oh, another thing that this movie has in common with the new movies is that they also replace the Shredder in the second one. Yeah, man, that's Shredder. You can just cast anybody in the Just cast any Asian guy, and it's a Shredder. It's okay. It would be cool, though, if they, like, in the mythology, if they did a version, because, like, Karai has worn the Shredder mask, and, like, the version of Shredder that's, like, a... The Utram? An Utram, you know? I like the idea. I don't want to see. I like the Ultron. idea of the Shredder being Could a be mantle, anybody? being a mantle that people pass down because they hate turtles. I think that's actually pretty cool. The worst thing is that Shredder got crushed by a trash compactor, and all he has is like like three little scars on his face. Yeah, and <laughs> well, he did. I guess he and, drank and some what, of that. He ooze. passed out in this trash compactor for like. Six months in the garbage. <laughs> he was sleeping in garbage for six months without food or water. The that ooze. means he was probably just eating garbage <laughs> the to ooze. survive. The ooze works slowly. Oh, works slowly. Okay, it works slowly. It doesn't so he's not, not that he's fast. not laying there just eating. You garbage. saw how long it took those little tiny turtles to turn into teenagers. So Fifteen years. Now they should have little scenes in this movie where he's just getting like proportionally like a little <laughs> more veinier and jacked. Um. We have the introduction we just missed of uh, the nerdy scientist who's here to explain all of our science needs and give another Donatello thing. nothing to do. So another thing that they did from the comics where they replaced a character they could have had they could have had they could he just could have been Baxter Stockman mm-hmm. and instead they just like no, invent a new a, character. He's a British white guy. You know, it's the same thing with Tatsu. Like they could have had Hun. 
Mm. But instead, they just invent like another. A brand new I don't character. mind inventing new people as long as you like don't like dishonor the other people. You know what I mean? Or like screw them over. Because what's good about having new people well, is that you can do whatever you want with but, them. It, but it's the whole problem with the old trilogy. It's like also like Tolkien Rock. It was supposed to be Bebop and Rocksteady. Dude, this would be the greatest cosplay. This orange jumpsuit with a tie and a little orange hat. That's says TGRI. That would be a great cosplay. People would think you're a nerdy criminal that broke out of prison. And I love her. Look at her jumpsuit too; is awesome. That's the way to do it. In this movie, she's not wearing too much yellow, though. What's up with that? She needs yeah, to bring back. What the ye- is she needs up to rock with yellow. that? You gotta rock that. Kill Bill ain't got nothing on April O'Neil. She needs that Kill Bill outfit. Look at that little ponytail and mustache. Yes, he's a professional. This is recording, right? I hope so. <laughs> you hope so. Of course, it's. Let's recording. find out after two hours. Of it's course, it's recording. recording. We're doing okay. fantastic. Awesome. Now this always confused me as a child because I didn't real I didn't know like what this plant was supposed to look like when it's the not- dandelion, right? Yeah, but I didn't know what it was supposed to look like when it's not ginormous because I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know anything about what plants. Dandelion is so I was like, wow, this plant. Why is it so special? Just because it's big? It doesn't make sense. Well, I think I got the fact that like you know that those aren't like normal size. That's why everybody's freaking out. I think yeah, I yeah. understood that part. You're smarter than I. <laughs> Well, I was probably older than like you. Like, I got it. Once he cracks it now, I'm like, oh, it must be important. Well, I think I was probably older than you, though. Just by a little bit. Don't rub it in. Bro. Probably like three years. No, you're not that much older than me. You're probably like four or something. What are you talking about? Well, you're like a year out. older than me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes. Steven, aren't you like 27 or something? No. How old are you? Spoilers for the podcast. Spoilers. I'm Spoilers. 29, dude. You're 29? Well, I'm two years older than you then. Yeah. Nothing, okay. Bro, what the hell? So you were like five. Okay. Facts about Mr. J. He's two years older than everyone in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so here he's like, oh, I know about all these risks, but uh, screw it. Just keep on making news. So, uh, but like, I don't know. They're trying to cover up the evidence, right? Yeah, they're trying to hide that they spilled it or whatever, right? But then he's just gonna, like... But then doesn't he go back and dump it all? We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. That's the secret of the ooze, is corporate mishandling of... Yeah. Of uh, regulated material. <laughs> now, this is pretty dope. Shredder with a little flower. That's so romantic. Come on, what do you want? And this is how turtles clean. No, they can't hold their weapons, but they can hold a bow staff double mop. Whoa. And a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Smooch. Oh, Smooch man. and nooch. See, but that's innocent. That's not like... You know... Like, the modern turtles would have, like, humped that broom. No, it wouldn't. Yes, they would have. He would have... They would have rubbed that broom on their turtle crotch. Look, look. Karate Kid. Whoa. Wax on? Wax off. You think, uh... You think Master Splinter loves a little... Mr. Miyagi action? Mr. Splinter here? and Mr. Miyagi. That's the crossover that we need. Oh win? my god. Would Steven, you, you could have Monk and you could have Why Monk? Jackie Chan. Tony Shalhoub and Jackie Chan. Yeah, because Tony Shalhoub is the new Splinter. Who's Jackie Chan? Jackie Chan is the new Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid that oh. nobody liked. <laughs> but he was good Smith in it. Karate Kid? But he was good. No. Boo. <laughs> Who's Jaden Smith? Well, you know, I, we're getting derailed now, this is but. Dope. Okay, that's obviously a matte painting, and they are obviously on a set, <laughs> pretending to be on a rooftop. I don't. That's a good painting I'm because cool I never really it. noticed that too much. No, I've always noticed it. You always noticed it. I've always thought this is the most setty looking set in the mo- in all the sets. It looks like it could be real. No, this is awesome because, like, you know, Splinter's like little wispy goatee is just like blowing in the breeze. It's so cool. This is a cool speech. You get another origin speech, but this time oh, because they saw because they saw the TGRI in the news, so they and they remember the canister has TGRI. So all these years he hasn't showed him the canister. He's just revealing it now. Whoa. This is where we came from. This is our secret origin, guys. Now this was, you know, what's interesting is that in the first movie they had the like this great um, claymation. Uh, yeah. Montage story of their origin. Well, I think it's probably more puppets than claymation. 
No? You think? Well, I think the little baby turtles are, like, probably... I think they're all puppets. You think they're all puppets? Yeah, it's Jim Henson. Claymation. <laughs> they are unique. Oh, no. Face ready danger. I have to sneeze. God damn. No. No, the, the enemy. So, this is another thing that I'm thinking was a wasted opportunity, because... Since you have the secret of the ooze... Um, since number two is the secret of the ooze, don't you think that the natural progression would have been number three, would have been the Krang, and introduced that, like, they were the ones that put the ooze here? If you can go back in time... Turtles in time? No. <laughs> Imagine doing, like, on a Krang's, like, a Technodrome invasion, but you did it, like, Independence Day, where the Technodrome just, like, comes to New York and is, like, watching everything... From like the bay or something. From afar. With the giant eye swiveling on top watching everybody and everyone's like, whoa! And then like, you know, like a third of the way through the movie, like the... Steven, check out this old ass computer. It's cutting edge. And look at all those blinking what is lights that? in the IBM? background. The, I, I believe the blinking lights in the background are the actual processors of that supercomputer. Holy shit, that's garbage. Whoa, he's taking it. He wants that canister for himself. Good thing this scientific corporation put its name in neon signs on the roof. Well, I think the original uh, comic book was TCRI, right? Not TGRI. Yeah, why, why would they do it? I don't know why they changed it to G. See, it's like unnecessary changes like this that make no sense. They probably thought, like, you know, the same way they thought on the 1970s Hulk TV show. What? Like, Bruce Banner sounds a little too homosexual. We'll make him David Bruce Banner. So, TCRI, that sounds too wimpy. We need TGRI. Right? Really? They added an extra name to the to the guy? In that movie? I don't know. Yeah, well, I've never seen it. In The Incredible Hulk, they call him David Banner. Well, the entire time, until like one episode, they show his tombstone, and they honor the comics, and they call him David Bruce Banner. Whoa. So the whole time, they call him David Banner. Yeah, and a lot of people still think of him as David Banner. That's why that but rapper is David is Banner. Yeah, David Banner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now they're looking at serial numbers They're trying to like track their missing canister And guess what <laughs> They're too late No No deposit, no return Oh my god he's making a joke about those things At the <laughs> bank that look like The canisters of ooze And, and it's so easy to read And like Um Decipher these programs. <laughs> he found the file so easily, or was it already open? I think it might have already been open, but Donatello is supposed to be a skilled, you know, computer person. He just figured that out way too easy. Um, see, this movie just, like the first movie, you have this great conflict between Leonardo and Raphael, you know, and then you have the drama of Leonardo, like, missing and trying to, like, get back with Raphael. We don't hurt. need any of that drama. We just no, want to get to the fun the stuff. For your mama. We just want to get to the fun stuff. Let's beat up some foot. Here's a great set piece where they get to play with this cool set and uh, kick some. So uh, one of the things that they love to do is play uh, keep away. Yeah, they play monkey in the middle with a lot of ninjas. That's how they do it. <laughs> why are there like why is there seven guys standing on a ledge just like making different poses? Not jumping down to fight. <laughs> Is it just... You know, I think because... Oh, now they're ready to jump down to fight. I think because this movie is a lot, like, brighter. Because the first one was definitely more, uh... You know, every scene is, like, very dark dimly... And shadowy. Dark and shadowy. Yeah. So, like, this movie, I noticed more, like, the, uh... The heads, you know? You could see, like, the... No, they're definitely not afraid of, like, neon and... No, but, like, you could see, like, where the head... Is like not connected to the body uh, on the, the turtles. turtles. You could definitely tell that they're mass because it because it's so bright. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the first movie they did it on purpose to like cover up the imperfections of the makeup. Yeah, you could totally see at the head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in this one, uh, they definitely don't discriminate the, the the ninjas. They have all different body sizes. There's that one big ass ninja. Except I don't think they have any other than Tatsu and Shredder. 
You don't see very many Asian ninjas. <laughs> They're all like white kids who went to Taekwondo classes and flunked out and got mad. No, I mean, they're not all white kids, though, because, uh... They're mostly white kids. No, because, um... They're all from, like, Well, Long I don't want to I don't spoil it, because it com- it's coming later. But you know Michael J. White's in this movie, right? Michael Jai White. Michael Jai White, sorry. He is. He's one of the... the is he one of the trainers? I was going to say, like, trainers or, like, the choosers or whatever. Yeah. yeah. People holding the tryouts. And I, that's actually a cool thing. But you would think movie. you have Michael J. White in this movie. You would use him a little bit more? No? I guess they didn't know all the talent they had. Michael J. White should play the shooter. <laughs> that's all I want to see. Now it's time to find out what the ooze can do. Oh my god, it's Schwarzenegger. Don't you want to see Schwarzenegger as a shooter? I do. I think she died. We die in the top of sea. Who is that girl? Uh, is she a famous supermodel? I don't know. That went by so fast I missed it. She had brown hair, right? But it was feathered. I don't know. Too dangerous for women around here. See, it's the 90s. Yeah. Everybody's wearing, like, uh, super baggy clothes. Even April. What was the age? Twas. It was the age of comfort. The height of Zumba. And now it's the age of skimpy. Spookular. <laughs> I love the weird, like, random. So how did Kino turn around references? Again? Well, because they had originally ordered the pizza on the night that he was abducted, and then he never, I guess, delivered the pizza, but they paid for the pizza, and he didn't get a report, I think. But you know, you know what I mean? see, what's weird is that he's saying that a guy in the apartment. No, Some he's other just guy messing, ordered pizza. He's just messing with her because he thinks that it's her because they order so much pizza, but he's not sure. Those are mine. Oh, yeah, she's a nunchuck. So you think he's been to her apartment before then to order pizza? That means to deliver pizza. She's a green nunchuck. Yes, he has. He's been their favorite pizza guy. I love April trying to chuck. He's not buying it. Uh oh. Oh, turtle foot. And this is a callback to the first movie where you have a kid like noticing the turtles hiding in uh, the light of day. Yeah. So this is their callback to that a lot more lighthearted. Now, if you drama. if you saw a turtle foot, your first instinct would be to step on it. What if he just like ate your face? Oh my god! Or if he just roundhouse kicks you in the throat? It's always the rat that makes people pass out, huh? Well, if I saw a giant rat, I think I would pass out too. No, not if he talked like Master Splinter like in that smooth voice. Lily kind of looks like Master Splinter, right? Oh, look at his face. You're a little rat. I don't know. <laughs> a. Oh, he's gonna tell him the story. Another callback to the first movie. Got to treat everyone like they're idiots and <laughs> tell them the turtle's origin like fifty times. Well, this one they do it a little quicker because they, you know, they figure you've seen the first one. <laughs> But just in case you haven't, here's the ten cent origin. So more turtle facts. That's what the people want. So this film was written by Tom Todd W. Langen. Everybody is not listening. I'm. I've never heard this writer. I've never heard of this director. Who are these people, Stephen? Where do they find them? I think you and me can write a turtle movie. Oh, and he has the backing of Mirage Enterprises. This film was shot in New Zealand. Well, not anymore. Cause Hong remember, Kong. Nickelodeon Japan, owns the rights. And the United States. Well, I was trying to say, remember, now uh, Nickelodeon owns the rights. So all the movies are Nickelodeon. Which we're like Paramount. Yeah, where the first one was more like a small independent movie. Well, so Turtles 2 cost $25 million to make. Million. And it made $78.6 million. So three times its budget. That's pretty good. Well, that's good. pretty good. So why do you think they cheaped out on the third one? So they can up their profits even more. Well, I think... Well, maybe it might be because... Um, I mean, you, if you figure, like, marketing... 
usually marketing is double the budget. So like it'll be like, what it, would you say? Thirty five million was the production budget. So like the marketing might be like another thirty million. So wow, the, I didn't even realize this because I'm bad. What? But um, the guy who plays the scientist guy. Yeah, who's this guy? He's a famous British actor who's in Star Trek called David Warner. He's in Star Trek? Yeah. Which one? He is in, um, I believe, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country as a Klingon. Oh, I still haven't seen that one. Let me just double check. Um, sure. Earth information. He's also in Scream 2. Titanic. So what the heck did he do with this ooze? Because it, it has Wing a... Wing Commander? Whoa. Steven. Planet of the Apes. Like before, they were just spilling regular ooze on plants and making them big. But like if you notice, like in the tube, it had like a different color and texture to it. Like what the heck did the scientists do? Oh my bad. He was both in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier as Sergeant John Talbot, and... In Star Trek VI, the undiscovered country is Chancellor Gorka. Um, he also did a little old film called Time After Time, which Are you I'm gonna dying to watch. Every movie that he's ever done. Yes, because Time After Time is actually a really cool movie. You know about? I like the song, though. Time After Time. It's just like that, only in that movie, David Warner plays Jack the Ripper, who... Someone time travels to Jack the Ripper's time, and Jack the Ripper steals his time machine, goes to the 70s, and starts killing people in the 70s, so that dude who lost his time machine has to catch Jack the Ripper. Whoa. Jack the Ripper. Whoa. From the 70s. Uh, so if you remember, the in the first movie, the turtles also lost their lair. The, the foot found their lair and destroyed it. Yeah, you just can't keep a underground... Uh, lair a secret. No, it's just, you know, everyone knows. So here they are finding a, a new lair. See, you get some, you, you get them fighting again. So the guy who plays Tatsu, his name is Toshishi, Toshishiro Obata. And, uh, you know, he's... I don't think he's done anything else, right? I don't see anything else. What about Surf Ninjas? Was really? he in Surf Ninjas? Everybody was in Surf Ninjas. Get me every, every Asian a- every Asian actor. <laughs> I need to make a film called Surf Ninjas. Was Kino in Surf Ninjas? Yes, he was. He was one of the leads. He was the prince, the chief lead prince. Whoa. Surf Ninjas. Where is my IMDb app? So Mikey just falls like deeper into the sewer and he finds an even cooler place. An old abandoned subway. Wait, where from? Whoa. Uh, so Adam Carl is voicing Donatello. Lori Faso is uh, covering Raphael. Robbie Rist is doing Michelangelo. Brian Tochi is uh, Leonardo. So I guess that they couldn't get uh, Corey Feldman to come back for this one. I don't get it. Uh, you would think that the first one made so much money that they would be able to uh, uh, spend a little bit more. Well, you know who voiced Token Razor? Who? Oh. The great Frank Welker. Who's that? Frank Welker is a Is he uh, related to Wes Walker? No, and he's not related to the... What's his name? Oh, no, it's Weller. Different. Tom um, Welling? No. Welker. Frank Welker. Is a famous voice actor. You may know him as what? As the voice of one Mister Bigfoot in a Goofy movie. And eh, wrong. Was Shredder's cape just as uh, loud and hideous in the first movie? That's how he rolls, man. Don't, don't judge a man by his cape. There we go. He, so, Frank Walker was in... I'm double-checking my facts so I don't look like a fool. But I'm pretty sure that he's Optimus Prime. In the new movies? In, like, history. Like, he's the Optimus Prime. Like the Prime. 80s. No, like, the original and he was the Optimus Prime in the film. 
In the eighties move. In the eighties. No, he was the. What does that mean? He voiced the Transformers. The cartoons. Blaze, the Buzzsaw, cartoons. Chromedom, Frenzy, Groove, Jazz, mm-hmm. Laser Beast, Megatron, yeah. Galvatron, Mirage, Mixmaster, Ratbat, Ravage, Rumble, Sharkticon, Sharkticon. <laughs> In the cartoon, Sharkticon. right? Skywarp. Yes, everyone. Okay. He voiced everyone. Oh no, but is he? Oh, maybe he's not. No, he's he's a Megatron's original voice then. So uh, he's an Optimus. He's just Megatron. Steven. And all these guys. Well, back besides, back to the movie. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to give you guys facts. So she has a different boss in this movie. Yeah, I guess that guy wanted to like. And a different time channel. With his family. No, I mean this looks like a different channel too. No. She's not loyal. She's just out for a paycheck. Here they. Find I'm telling you, I don't. I don't think she ever got rehired layer. by that guy. She finds a new sweet lair in an abandoned. A train stop, and there's they brought potato chips, so everything's good. Come on, what look at those. Mean? Even they even cheaped out on the potato chips. They don't have yeah. no lays. I guess you have product placement. Trying to get that product placement, yo. What's we going don't want on? children feeding lays to turtles. We can't afford that. <laughs> lawsuit wise, maybe. Um. So a lot of great puppeteers worked on this movie, but the most famous of note is. Elmo himself, Kevin Clash, who is the man behind Master Splintor. Um, but he doesn't do the voice, right? He does the voice. Kevin Clash does the voice? Yeah. So, he, but he does a fake Asian accent? Is that kind of racist? Uh, I guess, but he's a rat. He's an Asian rat, so... I always knew... Tony Shalhoub does it now, and no one says it's racist, so... Whatever. But Tony Shalhoub um, doesn't do an Asian accent, right? So, um, in November 2012, uh, sobering fact, or fun fact, right. uh, Kevin Clash was... Uh, Steven, don't talk about that on the don't podcast. Don't bring it down? Don't bring it down! I'm trying to keep it real! Master Splinter... This is a fun family film. We don't need a... Master Splinter, it took him till 2012 to realize that he was a proud gay man. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking about... There was allegations that he banged some young... Steven! Some, like, 17-year-old oh guys. Steven. But, you know, he just did it because he likes this. Uh, well, this is awesome because they're like... He's like, attack me if you will. And they just love him because he's their daddy. It's their mama, actually. Babies. This is the best mother- Stupid babies. This is the best Mother's Day movie. And who's your favorite Mother's Day mother? Master Shredder. Master Shredder. Huh? Ma. Ma. Mama. Because oh. he, was, he was telling them I'm your master. And they who, couldn't say master. Who do you prefer? Toka or Razor? Wouldn't you rather have Razor? He looks like a cute dog. Yeah, he looks a lot cooler than Toka. <laughs> and you could, like, hug... T- Razor, but you can't like hug Toka, you get stabbed or something. And this is another thing, like, you could have just replaced Toka with well, Slash. Spike. I mean, Slash, Slash. Slash is the bomb, and he's crazy, and yeah. he's like cool, he has spiky teeth. It would have been perfect, but you know, they wanted a snapping turtle this time. What kind of turtle was Slash? Mm, I'll say right now. Mm, internet, help me. The answer was that it's little. I know Toka's a, a snapping turtle because he has that beak. So the scientists figured out how to uh, mutate the animals into like half humanoids. What I don't get is they had they used all of their ooze on only two animals when they have to fight four turtles. Why wouldn't you make four animals to fight four turtles? But they only have one canister. Yeah, so split it up and have like four average sized animals instead of two really big animals. But if you remember, they were they were doing they were holding their own against the. T- I mean, they were they were kicking their butts actually against the turtles. Without the turtles training? have to outsmart them. Yeah, that's because they're not allowed to use their weapons. Oh, check it out, Michael Jai White. Whoa, looking looking super tough with his leather jacket. Channeling the power of a thousand Fonzies. Michael J. White, he's always in all the best comic movies, right? So, the Dark Knight, according Secret to, of the Ooze. 
Oh, there's a there's a turtle named. So wait, so you are right. There's a turtle named Spike. Splash's real name, I guess, in the new animated series, is Spike. Oh, because Raphael he has a little pet turtle, and before he gets mutated, he calls him Spike. Oh, so his pet turtle is. Turns out to be Slash one day. Is what you're saying? When he gets mutated, he calls himself Slash. So according to the internet, his species is a mutant box turtle. A box turtle. Uh, cool. So Kino's going undercover here Infiltrating the foot You got some espionage in this movie That's so dope Like Danny went undercover Into the foot also Only he did it on purpose And then Turned around So they mixed it up They mixed up the same plot So they basically ripped off the plot of the first movie <laughs> Yeah they basically said do the same movie, but with more vanilla ice this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did, they had some different twists, right? Because the, the villains made their own mm. uh, evil mutants. And Kino fights like a champ. No one can take him. He's just taking everybody out. Doing flips, kicking them in the face. Uh-oh, bye-bye. Oh, done. And look, he's the only Asian person we've seen so far. No. Who's trying out. It's true. Right. He's the only Asian one. He's the only Asian looking one. This is awesome. You know, a jacket covered in bells. You have to take off the bells with your ninja stealth without making noise. It's awesome. That's like every ninja fuel dream I've ever had has come from this sequence. So you've always dreamed of touching bells? Of being as silent as a ninja. And moving in smoke. Whoa. Whoa! And look at this great, great. Uh, he got them all dialogue from the crowd. He's gonna make it. You would think. Really you would think to not be suspicious that he wouldn't get like he would leave like one or two behind. And no one notices that this garbage dump is full of ninjas. No one's bringing garbage <laughs> to this dump at, during the day. It's closed during the day. Maybe the shredder In runs this junkyard. The Shredder's the master of the junkyard. <laughs> he got crushed in garbage yeah. and became the king of the garbage. <laughs> that's, how, that's how well trained he is. And if it's that's so how do easy it. to infiltrate this place, Raphael, they didn't even show you a cool shot of Raphael jumping the wall or like climbing out of a sewer main or something. He's just there. <laughs> Shredder's greatest enemy right under his nose. I don't think they ever show the turtles climbing anything. They never do that type of agility work in the puppet suits? Oh, man. That's too hard. We're looking for a <laughs> muffler for a 77 Chevy. <laughs> 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 Whatever happened to the smile and tattoo, stone face. Tattoo's like, he's the silent Bob of this movie, totally. Yeah. He's got like three lines. And um, Master Shredder's J. He just J. <laughs> he just rambles on and on about stupid shit. Hmm. Come on, use your size, man. Stab these people in the face. And just like Jay, he's always like selling shit to fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Shredder's hard. He's gonna have to sell drugs now. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, flips like I hit him. Good job. I don't think they will let you in now. I think that's what we need, Steven. We need the Jay and Silent Bob Master Shredder Tatsu crossover. Whoa. You hear that shirt punch? Get on that shirt. What's a shirt punch? It's like one of those like 24-hour limited shirt sites where they like put up a nerdy shirt for 24 hours. Whoa. And they try to make money off of it. Whoa. Tatsu so bald. Oh, now he's not laughing anymore now. Shit Master just, Shred us, yeah. Shit just got real. How yeah. did he run, run all the way back to... Run, where is this Manhattan? Run across every bridge in New York to get home. Why didn't you just call April's like home phone number? You didn't get her home phone number? So you could call your friends? What part of New York is this? Manhattan? And man, you know how... I feel so ripped off by this movie now. Why? 
just realized there's no turtle van in this movie. Like, they have to walk everywhere. Like, in the first movie, you have the turtle van. Yeah. Even though it's not the turtle van, it's still a van that the turtles get in. It's a turtle van. Yeah. But this movie, you don't even have a van. Well, they they effed it up in the last How one. How are they getting they? around? They're just walking through the sewers everywhere? They're doing the Lord of the Rings walk everywhere to take out Shredder? This is the worst. <laughs> We're about to get into some mutant on mutant action. So right now Donatello is uh, taking out a couple of uh, bow staff uh, wielding ninjas. And he's showing them that he is the supreme bow staffer. Look, it's Ralph. It's Ralph. And he's tied to <laughs> rewind wouldn't be, this. Wouldn't that be funny if it was Ralph from The Simpsons? <laughs> it's Ralph Wiggum. Really, what Just give Microphone. Just give him a donut. Lily. Stop it. So Raph's trying to warn them that it's a trap, but he's not Admiral Ak he's not Admiral Akbar. So he fails. Um Turtles slowly approach. Anticipation builds because we are ahead of the turtles. Donatello. And we know that token rays are coming. Donatello just goes into the most long-winded like, he could have just said it's a trap, and they could have gotten the hell out of there, but he just goes into this long-winded explanation <laughs> about it being a trap. Lily thinks that it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. It's the Shred dude. Lily wants to add the some Shred commentary dude. to it. He has a little surprise? No, you have two huge surprises. No, that's the surprise. Oh, those, it's that you're going to get a turtle kebab. No! That would have been dark, though, if the turtles died right in front of Raph, and he was the surviving turtle. Whoa. That would be crazy. Or maybe just Leo dies, and then he could take over. <laughs> and then, Oh, and then maybe it comes out that that was Raph's plan all along, was to get Leo out of the way. <gasps> He's in Lee? No, never. You think a Ralph Nader would, joke? Wouldn't that be... What? They just said Ralph Nader in this movie. <laughs> I don't know why. They did? Yeah. No. It they did. They just said Ralph Nader. Am I going to have to rewind this thing? He Rewind it. It's worth rewinding. Rewind. He just said uh, that I'll never see President Ralph Nader, I think. No. <laughs> I think that was the joke. I don't even think Ralph was Nader was running for president at this he point. He was. I mean, he was a billionaire. In 1991, I don't think he was running for it. He wasn't. Ralph play. Nader was a billionaire? Press play. I think you're thinking of Ross Perot. I am thinking of Ross Perot. Who the hell's Nader now? I'm confused. Ralph Nader was the independent guy. He was probably poor. He was four? Nobody voted for him. Let's just have to look up Ralph Nader facts right now. Yes. Ralph Nader was, was poor. So where the hell did, did you get Ralph Nader from? You're I have see. a little surprise. Okay, guys, we just rewinded back. Oh, no. To I don't the like this. the spikes, yeah. They're going closer to the spikes again. Sorry for the rewind, but Ralph Nader... Is I think you're falling asleep, Stephen. Where does he, he say Ralph Nader? I saw it. It's coming. Patience. Patience. First then, then you. <laughs> These nets are remarkably effective. Okay. Very well constructed, yeah. Remind me to drop a line to Ralph Nader. What? what? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get that reference. Okay, so Ralph Nader is an American political activist as well as an author, lecturer, and attorney. Yeah, but why would Michelangelo want to drop a line to Ralph Nader? Because Nader's particular concern was consumer protection. What does that have to do with this movie? That means that it's a good rope and it's not breaking. It's a good well, net. Well, Steven... So Splinter, the consumer was bought a good net. Cowabunga, hells yeah. Splinter could have been in the Hunger Games, yo. Well, he could have taken out Candace. everybody. He could have taken, taken out everybody. Candace. So who's the better archer? Splinter, Hawkeye, or Green Arrow? Definitely Splinter. Definitely Splinter. Because yeah. he's a mutant. He does it with little rat fingers, you know? That's awesome. Arrow misses. Splinter, all he needs is one arrow. <laughs> he only brings one arrow with him everywhere <laughs> he goes. Yeah, that's all he needs. <laughs> I'll get it done. Green Arrow and Hawkeye, they have like a 20 million arrows, and they do nothing. Ralph talks too much. You need to shut up, Ralph. That'll save you first. I like that. They're using a sword lid as 
defense. That's cool. They're still not using their weapons, though. No. That's because they're just, like, rubber in this movie on their backs. But the even but even the bad guys are not using their weapons. You would think that it's okay to uh, slash a turtle in the face, no. right? Too many kids were getting hit who in the are they? face by these Wait, weapons. But you saw how Michelangelo got away, and they're still... Who the hell are they pounding? I don't know. And who's this guy trying to, like... Who cares about getting <laughs> the top of the bow staff? <laughs> this is hilarious. It's awesome. Uh-oh, Splinter's out. He's like... Fuck it. I don't Damn, he just came to right throw yet. one arrow. Sorry, guys. And then Run he left. The arrows. Be right back. In the last movie, he took down Shredder by himself. He could have just... So hold on, Shredder. He just could have showed... Hold on one second. Yeah. So you thought you were going to kill him on some spikes? And your backup plan was a WrestleMania reference? <laughs> was <laughs> the... Was Toka and Razor? Yeah, Toka and Razor's the backup plan. I don't like it. You leave with Razor and Toka if you got Toka and Razor. Yeah, but you had them in the nets, so they were already captured. Someone went to the... uh, Who did Splinter give the job... I mean, Shredder give the job of, like, guys, go into the junkyard, find some cool stuff. We can use his armor on our new mutants. Let's design something. See, I always thought it would have just been the mutants that picked it up and, Oh, that picked their own clothes? They picked their own clothes. But they're babies. They can't dress themselves. Yes, they can. They don't know what's good for battle. They're, they would both be just wearing like little like like de- what, what, what if they both chose dresses? But like we want to look pretty. What would you do then? Ah, uh, whatever. I don't know. Well, another is this gonna be another ripping off lips joke. Yep. I gotta get the hang of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So he's freaked out because he's like a talking it's, turtle? It's a talking, it's alive. His research has never gone this far. He thought it just made things big, not just big and smart. Ouch. That has to hurt, getting thrown on top of a car and then over. <gasps> they found a sewer oh, lid! Now they can escape. Thank you, New York City. Although, it's probably not safe for a sewer lid to be in a junkyard Why not? where junk chemicals could spill down into the sewers, right? Well, how do you think they turn Someone turtles? Someone call Ralph Nader, goddamn. Well, how do you think you're going to make mutant turtles if you don't have open sewer lids? I don't know, but the scientist, he don't want to go in the sewer. He's going to have to learn. Learn to stop being so arrogant, start being humble, going to the sewers. So... This is a truck, much like the truck in the first movie. So I guess that's a callback, right? So there's no other way to get through except going through that truck? Yeah, they blocked the way. Whoa. Whoa, pick up that truck. Rip off its doors. They could have just jumped over it. Uh oh, time for one of my favorite gags. Take a <laughs> This is so silly. So Mikey sees Toka's feet. Because and his first thing so is to tickle him. Tickle, tickle, little baby. Come on. <laughs> He's the best noises here. <laughs> Thank you, Frank Walker. You're the man. Leo's got to keep him in line. But what? How does that hurt? By holding someone up by their bandana that hurts them like you're pulling their ear? That doesn't make sense. Well, like you're pulling their face. Mm, they love to give Donatello this face of like... Of like a, sh- like a shit-eating grin smile with like eyes to one side. Like that's like their favorite. You think his eyes to one side? Yeah. Like it's he just did the same eyes he does when he's on the... On the little spring thing in the beginning. They definitely got an upgrade on this new layer. Yeah, because they actually have light bulbs in it. <laughs> and, and like a cool entrance. Do you think each airway. of them has their own subway car? I should hope so. I mean, you don't want to share with your brothers when you're in your teens. You know, that's yeah. uncomfortable. You need your own space to put up posters. Yeah. Because Michelangelo is going to want some sweet, you know... MC Hammer posters, but Raphael's gonna want some sweet Guns N' Roses posters. So what are you gonna do? Well, you know that I don't know if M- I don't know if MC Hammer managed Vanilla Ice, 
but he was like involved in his career. That's why he very look. That's why he looks a lot like uh, has like MC Hammer style. Let's find out because it's relevant to this film. So here's what the doctor's explaining more about the ooze. It's an unknown mixture of discarded chemicals. And I think it was exposed to radiation, he said. So, this is cool. I guess because they have skylights now. They have upper lighting. Like, they could have done 20 movies out of this set. It was a great set. I mean, this is good, too. They're tying into the first movie and how, you know, explaining where the ooze came from. The secret of the ooze. So... I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find out the history with, of... With the Shredder, it just brought him back to life. Why didn't it just make him Super Shredder right, right away? <sighs> because he didn't have enough of it pouring through his veins. You have to have two doses of mutagen to turn into Super Shredder. So what are you looking for? I just learned that Vanilla Ice used to open for MC Hammer as well as a lot of other people. Yeah. MC Hammer would take him on tour. I think that's why he has the same style as like MC Hammer. MC Hammer, an old acquaintance from his club days, had Ice on it as an opening act on his tour. Reviews of To The Extreme were mixed. Um, so yeah, he just put him on tour and they became homies. I says mic technique is actually stronger and more nimble than MC Hammer's. Whoa. And he really tries earnestly to show off the skills he does have. This is uh, a reviewer named Stephen Huey talking smack. But Master Shredder ain't talking smack. He's talking the truth. He's telling them that we got to win tonight or else we'd be fucked. And you saw uh, earlier this year uh, Marvel had the hip-hop covers. Yeah. And Deadpool, guess what? To the extreme, he was uh, a Vanilla Ice cover. Makes sense. If anything, you know, that would have been a good person to play Deadpool in the 90s, if you did 90s version. Vanilla Ice? Rob Van Winkle? (laughs) Right? He got the Deadpool vibe. You think uh, Rob Van Winkle was a great actor? He's the best actor I know of in that film, The New Guy, right? (laughs) What the hell is The New Guy? That's that movie starring DJ Qualls as, like, a guy who, like, gets transferred to a different high school, and then, like, even though he's a nerd, decides to start acting like a badass. And then it's awesome because Vanilla Ice plays himself working in, like, a Best Buy or, like, one of those, like, video stores or something. And he's just, like, mad because he's Vanilla Ice in a video store. (laughs) And he's so poor. That's crazy. So... Th- this town must have like a, a curfew or something because this town, aka New York City. Oh, okay. Well, there's like two people, I guess. Aka New York City, the city that never sleeps. It doesn't sleep because it's being attacked by turtles. <laughs> there's and like two dogs. people. There's only like two people out in the street at night yeah. in New and, York City, and they're both over the age of sixty. That makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Lily, do you have a crush on Razor? Do you think he's attractive as a dog? <laughs> These are the questions our audience must know. Lily's looking at me all crazy. Hey, was oh, that the police chief, chief from the first he's one? He's back. Whoa, he's doing and a cameo. guess what? He doesn't, he doesn't believe this shit anymore. Still. He still doesn't believe in the turtles? You would think he I can't officially movie. believe in the turtles, man. You know what this movie needed? A Stan Lee cameo. I have no off the record, off the record. You know what would be great? Like, I know they never showed it, but I always imagined that, like, this cop, like, he would fit in in, like, the Ghostbusters universe, like, under that mayor in the Ghostbusters universe, right? I mean, basically... New York-y. I mean, pretty much any 90s movie. I mean, don't you think Commissioner Gordon pretty much, like, was kind of, like, the same role? No, this guy has way more character than Gordon in the, in the Batman 90s movies. 
No, it's about the same level of... No, this guy... Basically, like, the cops do nothing. Yeah, but he actually, like, talks, like, you know, like, rebelliously. Like, Gordon's just like, oh, Batman, that's great! <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, guys. Let's take a break. Batman's here. <laughs> but that's coffee. how it was in the in the '60s show. Every time there was a problem in the '60s show, they would always pick up the red phone. Oh, because okay, because it was Commissioner Gordon and there was Chief O'Hara, and Gordon would always ask Chief O'Hara pick up the phone if if they thought that they could handle it on their own. <laughs> and Chief O'Hara was like, "No, I think we need to call the Batman on this one." <laughs> Whoa, this guy's back with his little ponytail. You got two lines in this movie. One in one scene, one in the other. Your life is perfect. you think this would be a perfect... You know, uh, you could have put uh, Vernon in, in this one. You know who's, like, sort of, like, would have been a good April O'Neil? Oh. In the 90s? Courtney Cox, right? Because she's sort of the April O'Neil of the Scream movies. But so the thing is that, like... Because it wasn't, like, Ace Ventura her first movie? And that was, like, 92. 93? Mm, you think? I don't think so. I think that was her first movie. I don't think she was discovered yet. She couldn't have done it. She was discovered because she was in a little music video by Bruce Springsteen called Dancing in the Dark. And what year was that? I'll tell you right now. Early career. 1984 music video, Dancing in the Dark. Boom. Then she was on a short-lived television series, Misfits of Science, in 85. Then she dated one mixture, Michael J. Fox, a.k.a. Alex P. Keaton of Family Ties, from 1987 to 1989. Then she was in the feature film of the 80s, 1987's Masters of the Universe. Oh, yeah, she was in Masters of the Universe. She's Okay, so she was around. She was in Cocoon, The Return, a.k.a. the sequel. Steven. Well, you don't have time to give the full filmography here, okay? I'm just saying, she could have been bona fides yes. like April O'Neil. Yes, she could have been... If someone had vision. Except for that she has dark black hair. Yes, she could have been April O'Neil. But Neo. she's got the right spirit. She's got that spunkiness that people want in April O'Neil. What? Is, stop making food, Michelangelo. So, basically, uh, April went back down to the sewers to tell them that... Uh, that Shredder wants to meet them in the warehouse, and uh, if they don't, that he's gonna send Toka and Razor out uh, to yeah to kill people in Central Park. And that will we'll use that egg beater to make this mist even more misty. Everyone's eating pizza because nobody knows how not to eat pizza in this movie. And Lily's scared because she's hearing stuff outside. No. Lily. Look, they're pro I'm recycling because they say recycle. Use a transform token razor. Making them intellectually. So he did it on purpose. How the hell was he able to make them less intellectual? He did it on purpose. I know, but how, Steven? This makes no sense. He just did it. He, he didn't put <laughs> any mutant gen near their brain. He kept it near their like their body, I guess. He's a great scientist, Mr. J. I don't know what you're talking about. Ew, it looks like refried bean from Taco Bell. In a Bart Simpson cup. Whoa. Whoa, Bart, Bart Simpson, Simpson is in this movie? Yep. Damn. Damn. Close up. And you still haven't changed or taken a shower. You must be starving. You were just kidnapped. I don't think they have a shower in the sewer. The sewer, the sewer is one big shower. It's just very smelly. No Whoa, he's got an idea. And this is where I learned the most valuable lesson any young boy can learn. That if you bring a box of pastries with you... People will become your friends. Oh, that's why you're always bringing donuts to work. Exactly. Well, it's like Schwarzenegger. Hard to spell. Whoa, what a joke. Yeah. It's Don actually easy to Donatello spell. Donatello couldn't spell it. It's easy to spell. Shut up. A million HS cases. Zenegger. Exactly. <laughs> 
pretty quiet. It, you're damn right, it's pretty quiet because ninjas are there. Of course, Raphael has to yell out Shredder's name and get caught. Shredder. And they're fully surrounded. Perfect Yay. timing. We all need now is a worldwide sports and a blimp. <laughs> How ironic that everything that was your making would now be your undoing. This, this is his chance for the speech. And it's over. And it's over. Let the games begin! Yeah, we want to see the mutants fight. Mutant fighting is fun. Now, the level of action in this film is... Batman 66 level action. <laughs> they're, not, they're not running around with a bomb on their head. Imagine what we're going to see in this new film coming out this summer with all the CGI, all the stunt choreography, everything that has, like, you know, evolved. The, the fact that they're spending, like, six times the budget that they spent on this I, movie. I have to say, I have to say, though, wouldn't it be awesome to do the puppets again? But Jim Henson's dead, right? So you can't do it? I would do it. Well, Jim Henson was dead for a long time. So who does the puppets now? Like His son, Brian, did uh, the Henson team. Did Jim Henson do any puppets on uh, Force Awakens? Henson? Yeah, they designed puppets. They did puppets for the Force Awakens? Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the puppets were were them. Like the aliens and stuff, they designed aliens. Because the Henson family is a part of the Star Wars magic. That's one thing about the new Turtles. At some point, it just all looks like a big video game, right? Yeah, it's just CGI fest. But, I mean, it looks pretty cool. The thing is, like... But this looks more real. I just think, like, the the Turtles don't look as, like... They should look as cool as, like, Avatars, but they don't. You thought Avatar looked cool? Looked, Looked pretty good in the theaters. Yeah, but that's because you have, like, a 3D glasses in your face. Have you ever seen that movie? Uh, At home? No. Yeah, it's a lot less stunning, but it still, it still works. It's okay. It's not as good without the 3D effect. Oh, no, they knew that there was not, there was tainted stuff inside of the thing. Oh, no. Yeah, chase him. Run around. You don't have a bomb. I thought they were supposed to be stupid. How did they figure out that they had ice cubes? Because even they know that donuts don't have ice in the middle. Duh. And that's crap because Lily loves her medicine, so she would have still ate that ice cube. <laughs> so inaccurate to dogs and turtles. <laughs> dogs, yeah. Maybe I should have brought this bagels. Is awesome action! They threw him right up over to the club, and right next to an abandoned warehouse full of ninjas, there's a nightclub. It's the Dock Shore Club. <laughs> it says it right there, Dock Shore Club. So junkyard. Warehouse, Dark Shore Club, and and then nightclub, yeah. and then the bay. New York is the city that never sleeps. <laughs> but why is this nightclub next to this shady warehouse? And like, I imagine that warehouse is next to the junkyard too, and right? Why does it have secret underground Vanilla Ice concerts when he's like the biggest rapper at this time? I don't know. <laughs> and how many times do you think he? Because if you notice, they were playing a snippet of Ninja Rap. But he had so how many here. times? Yeah. So how many times have you he been singing ninja rap all night? <laughs> I love that this guy's like this place is the best. <laughs> Wouldn't you too? You think? Hey, you come here and you get a show? No, I would. My first thought wouldn't be, oh, those people that busted in are part of the concert. Like, <laughs> you think that is a concert? Part of the concert? Like when they do it in the Turtles live action concert special, it's barely believable. <laughs> That Master Shredder's attacking, but... Now there's a belching jokes? Burping jokes? <laughs> they, 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 they took the high ground, because they could have gotten the fart joke. But they won't burps. Oh, shit. Enjoy. Oh, I hear a beat. A beat that's been playing for the last ten minutes. Because it's the only beat we can afford to make for this film. Oh, Ninja oh. Rat. Whoa, just freestyle that. Yeah. And then freestyle dance, guys. Now notice how he's wearing both black and white to signify his gray nature in the storyline. I do have to say, though, with the puppet work, everything is so much slower. The fights are so much slower. 
Especially with Toka and Razor because th- it's so much like shit that this guy has to wear that they move so slow. It's like uh, watching the Power Rangers fight, like when they're fighting well, the Mech Zord. Razor and Toka must be like twice as heavy as the regular turtles because those heads look a lot bigger. Yeah. Oh, I love this. The two guys who run the club and they're trying to like... Like, call the cops. Wait, don't call the cops. Isn't it kind of a ripoff of like Back to the Future? Yeah, it is sort of like, hey, Marvin. <laughs> you you know that new they sound? Have a fresh sound. <laughs> yeah. You know that new sound you've been looking for? Well, listen to this. Oh, this is the introduction of CO2 as a catalyst. So, oh, so we gotta give them uh, fire extinguishers, of course. Genius plus genius. Sorry, Ernie Reyes, you're even though you're the star of this film, you're not allowed in the third act. <laughs> yeah, why is Matthew Splinter keeping him there? I guess because he's just a kid. And guess what? You want to be in the next movie? Nah, not gonna happen. I wonder if you ever, have you ever brought back Kino for the comics or the TV shows? I don't think so. I think he's a one and done. He's a one hit wonder. I would totally do it. Bring him back on the TV show and then like kill him off after six episodes. That'd be the best. They could do it. Give him some drama. You're not Luke Skywalker. You know, you're not. Is this just like go they just took Master things from Rome. other movies? Yeah, they're like, we need that moment where he tells Yoda that he's not going back. That he's going back for his friends. That's what they so the turtles figure uh, to use the um, the extinguishers to make their to make a retro or whatever retro mutagen. <sighs> You know that's another thing that they're doing in this new Out of Shadows movie, where they're bringing in the the retro mutagen into it. What does that mean? Okay, that it turns you back young, or turns into a human, or turns you yeah. Into a but see, the thing that's weird about it is that the turtles were never human. Yeah. So there's a part in the new trailer where Donnie is using the retro mutagen on himself, uh-huh. and you know how the turtles only have like three fingers. He gets like a human hand. Ew. Isn't that freaky? Stop trying to make these guys ready to bang. I don't want turtles banging. I want to be turtles. What are you doing? They like it. They like it. I have a ponytail. I know what cool is. Just like you. <laughs> every producer in the 90s had to have a ponytail. Yeah, every producer and cameraman had a small ponytail. Yeah, show them how you dance and kick it. Oh, yeah. Time. Oh, now they're dancing. They're break dancing now. We dig this beat. This is awesome. I would say that these fights are actually better than the fights of Toga and Rezar. That's because they're dancing. They're and, dance but, but they're able to move around more. Like, the fights with Toga and Rezar are very, uh... You know? Very, like... Ugh, you know? Like, because Toga and Rezar can't move around too much. Yeah, it's like two giant wrestlers going at it as opposed to, like, a ninja versus a big guy. Did they also do this part in the first uh, movie? Shell to Shell? Yeah, where they all crush him. Well, I think they did a two-way Shell to Shell, but not a four-way Shell to Shell. Whoa. Upgrade. So they up the ante. Whoa. Yeah. Steven, you should totally cosplay Tatsu this year. <laughs> See if anybody gets the reference. I don't, oh, even the scientist. Oh, the scientist is, down. is getting down, down to the, the ninja oh, rap. Oh, had a dance just ready to go. I love it. See, that's what this new down, movie truth. needs is a dance number. Organized dance choreography. Who would be the Vanilla Ice of today? Um, well, you had Wiz Khalifa on the first soundtrack, but he's not really the Vanilla Ice. I guess maybe Macklemore is sort of Vanilla Ice. Oh, is this because he's white? He's the only white yeah, rapper out there? Rapper. What do you want? That's how it <laughs> is. And he's a little corny. He might do if a this film had come out in 1999-2000, he could have gone Eminem. You think Eminem? I don't... He's too, like, serious. I don't he's know. He's too... Yeah, yeah. He's too serious now, but... Like, if you would have gotten, like, you know, Slim Shady Eminem, that would have been awesome, right? He's too dark. I think Hi, he, he would. My name is what? My name is. I think who? he's too dark my to do a kids chicka, movie. Chicka. Master Shredder. Master Shredder. <laughs> if you Uh-oh. saw this guy in he's all purple yet. and this nasty black and silver cape, wouldn't you be laughing at this guy? No, man. Prince was out. No, you don't mess with people who are purple. <laughs> he. Oh my God. He Shredder. You gotta get Shredder in Purple Rain. Oh my God. Can you imagine like Shredder meets Prince? And <laughs> Prince is like, I like your style. And the revolution? 
<laughs> you can join the revolution. <laughs> and he's like, I hate singing. Whoa, he's gonna watch them die. Oh, this is what Kino's here for. I'll kick it. I'll run up and kick it. I'm gonna run up and kick it. Oh, good thing I was here to get it. You are a fool. I'll so, take this random woman and use her as bait. As a hostage. So it's a little... It gets a little anticlimactic here because you think there's gonna be, you know, a great showdown. I'll cover her with this and make her into a... 80s woman forever. Whoa. Hey, that's is, another is this back to the future reference. Using the power of giant walls of audio to nail somebody down. Wow, they need to pay some royalty rights to fucking Back to the Future. Damn, Bob Gale, where's your uh, Bob royalties? Bob Gale's the mechas get on it. Yeah. Tino, yeah, now you have to watch this guy. See, anytime they mention a rat, everybody just faints in this movie. New York, I guess they really don't like their rats. <gasps> They're so cute. Look at Toka and Razor. He's, like he's like a wolf thing. It's awesome. Toka's still kind of ugly, though. Yeah. But I'm sure his mother loves him. Mama. So Shredder flew into the bay? Yeah, he got some major some major vert and uh, got relocated outside. So I couldn't get the VHS of this, but you know I had the, like, the picture book. I had, like, the pictures and the story. So I could read the story. That's all that matters. Whoa, and introducing Kevin Nash with some sweet introduction. Guess what I get to play? A giant But isn't this a Asian little... Mutant. How did his... How did his spikes grow? How did his metal parts get more metal? <laughs> yeah. And how did his things... I had the Super Shredder action figure, and I always looked at it and was like, how in the world did this... No, and these abs are totally painted on. This is terrible. <laughs> Who would win in the fight? Uh, Super Shredder or Bane from Batman and Robin, 1997? Uh, oh, man. Well, Bane, because Bane was actually a really strong guy. He was like, what, wasn't he a wrestler, oh too? Can you imagine Bane, like, just snapping Shredder's back? That would be awesome. But wasn't the guy that played... I think he was a wrestler, too. I think his name yeah, was G. Pence. He had G-Pence wrestling something? training. I think he was one of, like, in the Hogan camp or something. You know when you're watching this t te- when you're watching on TV, like if it was like a dark movie theater, but since like we're, you know, we have all the lights on and stuff, like his costume just looks terrible because he ha- he has all these painted on abs and painted on cat muscles, and you know that underneath is Kevin Nash. <laughs> He's got that white hair, goatee, just Diesel waiting for him. Don't forget we're turtles. That means that we're waterproof, guys. Come on. By the way, this was also the ending of so Spider-Man basic- 2. Yeah, so basically, Super Shredder got stuck under the dock, tried to free himself, and crushed himself. He just crushed it. He killed himself. Super sh- super suicide Shredder. This was, But this was the ending to Spider-Man 2, where Doc Ock just kills himself. No, but he sacrificed himself. In that movie, yeah. To save New and York. And this movie, Super Shredder is just an idiot. Yeah, he's not the smartest Super Shredder ever. So I love the fighting with the dancing and stuff, and the Toka and Razor stuff, but the, you know, the you thought that there was going to be a big fight between the Turtles and Shredder again, and they kind of copped out on that. Yeah, they were sort of like, guess what, this movie's going to end early for you guys. <laughs> Thank God that uh, turtles can and breathe this underwater. Is another matte painting, if not the same matte painting from before behind them. <laughs> oh no, his hand! Oh, his hand's dead. <laughs> oh well. No, but couldn't they just shredded. pour some more ooze on him and just he could be super ultra shredded? Yeah, just keep on sprinkling ooze. It's not. <laughs> uni- it's not like unicorn's blood from Harry Potter that it keeps you immortal. It's freaking... It's ooze. It's not magic. It is magic. Oh, no. She's calling out her friends on TV. But the code of the ninja demands secrecy. Hey, isn't that the same thing they're doing in this movie? Because they're finally out of the shadows. Yeah, they are. (laughs) They totally are. And it's awesome. Man, look at that TV. That's garbage. Because at least they're going to do the Technodrome now. So that's actually, like, worth it. 
right? Yeah. And they have Baxter hey, Stockman dudes. upgrade from this scientist dude. Now, as we wind down this podcast, I can agree with them and say, Cowabunga says it all, guys. Come well, on. where's Kino? Where's Kino? Where's the scientist? He met a nice girl at that club and decided to never hang out with the turtles again. <laughs> <laughs> right? He just quit crime fighting? Ninja Rap is born! Whoa! Practice harder, you morons! <laughs> the worst ninja ever! Now. Go, ninja, go, ninja, go, ninja, go! Go, Ninja, go! Whoa! Freeze frame! Just again! I uh, made another funny! Down. He's made of funnies, and that's the exact same joke as the first movie, and we're just gonna keep on doing it. <laughs> Does he do a funny in the third movie? We'll have to find out no, next I, time. I believe in the third movie he says, like, I really, really made a funny or something, or like, <laughs> he, he, he does make another funny thing. That... So, final thoughts? Thumbs up? Final thoughts? Co- three thumbs up? Thoughts as the credits <laughs> go by, and I am, like, not asleep. <laughs> Although I'm very sleepy. Steven didn't fall asleep and we walked the dog. Yes. So thank you to Paige Turco for taking over the role of O'Neill. She's the star of this movie. You are the headline talent right now. <laughs> yes, she is the original Megan Fox. Open it up. There's Kevin Nash's name right Super Shredder. Oh my Where? God. Kevin Nash. Whoa. 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 Diesel. Um, this movie's awesome. It is. It's super fun. It's fun. Fun. It's cool. Although you know, there's just so many things you could improve, but eh, it works, I guess. I thought I the up. the thing you could definitely improve. It was a little anticlimactic the fight with a uh, super shredder. You thought that it was gonna be this big badass fight, and they kind of comped out, and it was just like shredder killing himself. Yeah. Shredder no. suicide. Nobody wants to see the Shredder just like... Kevin Clash! Crap out in five minutes. Like, I want to see... Like, at least the new movie, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, or the Ninja Turtles movie, like, even though the Shredder was, like, overpowered and had, like, a bionic suit and stuff... Yeah. At least he was the point of, like, the major last fight scene of the movie. And at least he did get, like, ten to fifteen minutes kind of... Whooping ass, huh? You know what's weird about the new movies is I kind of felt like in the first one they went Super Shredder, and yeah. in this movie he's gonna be like regular Shredder. Yeah, they like, went backwards. He's downgrading, and he's younger. I'll be more ninja like. And and, and because they got Brian T and he's younger, they also replaced Karai with a younger actress as well. Brian T. Who's Brian T? Isn't it Brian T? The guy from Furious. What's his name? Furious. He's from. Isn't he from the bad guy in Tokyo Drift or something? Hey, I don't know anything. I think it's Brian T or something. Yeah. So, thanks, production executives, ADR editors, sound editors. And, and there's some great music in this movie. We got Vanilla Ice, Ya Kid K. What? Bring all those sweet facts. Um, I love the turtles. Turtles forever. Turtles forever. What and is... Who's your favorite turtle? Who's my favorite? Leonardo's always my favorite because he's a leader. And he wears blue and blue's my favorite color. Whoa. Whoa. I'm done, Tyler. Purple rain. Whoa, purple rain, purple rain. Um, everybody, while we're on this podcast, let's, uh, let's throw a shout out to Radiate.fm. Uh, they had an awesome Prince, um, tribute... A week of programming that was awesome. You guys should check them out. Our internet radio home Mondays at four. Also, go to maybe sunshine weebly dot com. Maybe sunshine episode one comes out on May third, and you all should check it out and support it because Lisa Hammer is awesome and uh, she kind of needs your help right now. So throw her some love and dinero if you got. Any to spare. Um, also, tweet us at Vundacast or at Vundablog and let us know what you think about all the cool stuff that we're up to. And I guess this will go up as episode 72. You gonna replace it? We're traveling in time and not gonna go explain anything at all <laughs> because that's a Vundacast secret for the vault in your face.
But when you post it, it's gonna be on the on the on the top, right? Yeah, it'll be out of order, but it'll still be there. But it'll post after seventy five, right? Most likely. Because because then people can't. Because by date. Because yeah, because like people like if they go on the website, it'll be the first thing on the website, right? The newest one. On the day, yeah, the day. Yeah. Director Terry Leonard. What else? Did he, unit. did he do anything else? Who? Anybody from this movie? No, they just made this movie and then they retired and lived off their millions. And I've never forever. seen Paige Turkle. Maybe Ever she's been again? on some TV stuff. Yeah, you can't discount them. Some of them, you know, they went on to the Kino, stuff. Kino definitely had a little bit of a career there for a while. But this movie is really the culmination of the entire, you know, history of Hollywood. And was it, wasn't was Ernie Reyes Jr. also in The Last Dragon? I think he was. I'm not sure, but I know he's in The Rundown. So I know. He oh, fights yeah, The he's Rock. In the Rundown, yeah. Fights The Rock in a Tree. You know what other movie? Oh, don't forget Payroll Services. Thank you so much for writing those checks to all those stunt choreographers. What's another great movie with a wrestler in it? Spider Man 1 with Macho Man. Oh my god, that's. Oh, that's so good. That's it's one of, of the best wrestlers. It's like one of the best Spider-Man movies Ooh, yeah, ever. Yeah, I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of blade time. I don't know if Terry Funk is in Rocky V, but you know he did the choreography for that fight? Yeah, for the street fight. Yeah, you told me. And I, he, he might be in uh, the Stallone movie, Paradise Alley. I still haven't seen that one. I'm trying to think of other wrestlers in movies. Ninja Rap, Creatures of Habit, This World... Find the key to your life. Oh, that's awesome. my favorite. Awesome. You are my hero. You are my hero. And what is your name? Move back to school. Um. Thanks so much for listening. I have been your host, Stephen. With me today. Oh wait, Stephen. Thank you for joining me, Mr. J. Uh, how are we gonna figure out what's the next movie we're gonna do? Let's continue. Do the whole turtle trilogy? Yeah, do all the turtles first. Whoa. That's how we start. Even the 2007 turtles? I guess, yeah. That's a lot of turtles. There's not that many turtles. What about the turtle forever? It's not like James Bond. It's like there's like 20 plus turtles. What about turtle forever? Does that count as a turtles movie? It could. It's a TV movie. It could, but I have to watch it first before we do commentary. Yeah. That's necessary. That was the end. Thank you, New Line Cinema. Woo! So, I've been joined by Mr. J. Any final thoughts, Mr. J? Anything you didn't get off your your uh, your chest? I think we should just do all the sequel movies. All the number twos first? Well, not even necessarily number twos, but just like all like the most fun ones. You know? All the funnest number twos. That's all of them. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2, that's the best. You got Bobby Brown on our own. Great thing. Bobby fun. Brown, he was in the movie too. Yeah. Yes. We gotta do Ghostbusters too. <laughs> Ghostbusters coming out. Oh man, we should do all the sequels to all the movies. That all are the coming sequels out. that are for movies that are being remade. <laughs> yeah, genius. We'll movie. do X Men Origins. <laughs> Wolverine Origins. Now we're gonna do X Two, X Men United. You don't go to the best one first. But that's interesting. You go to the funniest one. The second one is the, the Wolverine. The Origins has so much comedic material, right? Yes. Um, thank you for joining me, Mr. J, on this super special PCFC pop culture flowchart. You're welcome! Lily, you've been what I would say is totally radical and bodacious. And, uh, and I had to give her a lot of treats. <laughs> yeah. So she could calm down. Too bad you didn't have any pizza. You could have just dropped a large pizza pie in front of her and let her just go at it. Let me tell you, she likes the pie. What? Yeah. Figure out pizza. It she, comes to animal control. It's gonna take you down. <laughs> she, she'll eat. She loves anything. Anything I'm eating. Today I was eating Burger King. She was like, "Give me some of that sweet Burger King." So remember, kids. There is one word that will sum up your entire existence if you live your life correctly. Can I guess the word? Is it turtle power? That's two words, man. That's two words. Oh. You just flunked out. <laughs> Cowabunga says it all. Whoa. Wondercast? Give yeah. it up for Wondercast, man. What an adorable name. Yeah.